uh-oh, a guy's been working ahead of you a little bit, huh? What do you think? Now don't worry, we still have the left-hand side of the car to do, but I've just been playing around this weekend, seeing how things are fitting, and I just wanted to get this put away so it wouldn't get dirty laying around, and I think it's looking pretty good. What do you think? Now, if you watch the Humble Mechanic videos, um, I was concerned about the seat upholstery, and the owner of the vehicle stopped by today and took a look at what I had going on, and he really liked it, actually. He didn't see a bit of a problem with the two materials, and so that's all I can ask for, you know. So I think what we'll start with is we'll get this B-pillar cover made and put on over there, then we'll put on the panel, and then we will recover the other armrest. Let's get busy! Now this big old beef bone looking thing is our pillar cover. Try to get this out of here somewhat intact. think we'll just bring that to a point and we should be fine just like that The same board I use for the door panels and the side panels and the rear. Now I'm going to go cut this out on the jigsaw. I think you know how that works. If you really want to see me cutting door panels with the jigsaw, go watch the door panel video. Otherwise, I'm going to be right back in half a tick. That wasn't too terribly long, was it? Oh really? Well, it's like high school and girls all over again. There's just not enough me to go around. Okay, I'm just going to outline, add half an inch, and that'll be just fine. You'll notice I could have conserved a little more material here, but I need my nap to go straight from top to bottom. At least that would be the preferred method. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect. I really only needed the edges of both pieces glued, but you try telling a gun that. Just see how far it's gonna get you. Okay. Start this end here. Pull her tight, wrap it around. Honestly, it's just 
doing what should come naturally. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Most likely you didn't ask for anything else. Like Andy told Barney, we're just going to take care of that little Pike's Peak right there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. This will all be covered up, but let's see how we did. all right the naps going the right way this is the top it's nice and smooth going down so there we go let's go put a door let's go put a rear side panel in and we'll throw this on tack it in and then we'll put the garnish molding on this is exciting stuff people exciting Right, whether or not you can tell on the camera, I've marked where every nail or tack on the tack strip is on the back side here. We'll start in the center. Looks pretty good. This gets tucked down behind the side panel, like so. I'm going to go get a long tack here for that. All right, this gets tucked down behind, and then in the end, I'll have to make some, but I'll get another another strip here that kind of copies the wind lace that goes up and covers and it gets tucked down in here as well and we'll get to that later we we'll have none of that made yet for right now I'm gonna nail this on not with that nail I'm not one there is probably about all it needs. I think I'll put one down here though. And that will get covered up by that trim. Rest of this will just be held on by the garnish molding. Now I'm going to tack it on the back to our tack strip for the headliner. Missed, I think. Yeah, let me get the needle nose. I'm doing this upside down because of the camera. Probably 
probably my head's in the way. Okay, that'll hold it. Garnish molding's gonna hold it all on anyway. So, let's get that. Now you see these trim clips? On the other side, I had a deuce of a time getting my garnish molding. They need to be able to scoot right over the top and then go down. So, if we look at the back side, our clip needs to go right under the edge here and then the garnish molding goes down over it. And on the right side of the car, one of the clips just wanted to move with the garnish molding. So I was pushing as hard as I could. I could not get it to go past because this kept moving with it. So I just made a simple tool out of some thin metal, just something I could hold that clip while prying against the glass, keep that clip in place while I move the molding over it. I don't think I have this problem on this side, but uh, just so you know. I'm going to move you back here. Just pulled a tack out of my hiney. That would have been funny. Caught on film. Or whatever this digital stuff is. Alright. I punched my uh, regulator shaft through there. Now we're just going to start putting this on. Probably very self-explanatory. Yeah, this one went much easier. Take a plastic trim tool and make sure this upholstery is getting tucked up in there where it should. Just so we don't bunch up underneath here. That's pretty much it. Now I take a small pick, find the screw hole just like that. Should probably just use a regular screwdriver, but I'm getting lazy apparently. Okay, push that. B pillar trimmed down nice. This one should do the same. There. Now we should have our little coat hook here right above this screw somewhere. the hole with a needle. Might enlarge that with a pick. Right there. Here's our icky old armrest, obviously. You know, it, it could be worse. It's interesting they put like a duck material just on the last six inches or so. But you know, you consider, say they built half a million cars in 1948 Chevrolet and they used one square foot of duck material well, that was half a million square feet of expensive upholstery that they saved on. So, I guess it makes sense when you do the math. But nobody likes a bean counter, right? So, anyway, I'm getting way off subject here. Um, I'm just going to start pulling this off.
Now if you need to make a new pattern out of paper or whatever, you certainly can and go off the, the actual armrest. Um, obviously I have enough material to work with here that I can make my pattern based on what I've got. And I need this to lay flat. So I'm going to cut this seam here that goes around the top of the armrest just up to the corner so both pieces will lay flat and that there is what I need to copy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first lay this out on my material and only only trace around the bottom piece this piece I'll have two pieces when I'm done here cutting out material this piece from the seam here, and this piece. Now on this new material, I really have no nap either way, so it doesn't matter. I do need to make sure my stripes are running in the right direction. That much is probably obvious. Um, and I want them relatively square looking with the world and the rest of the car. So really all I can do is kind of judge a straight line of this seam across the top and get these more or less square with that. You know, you can see how wonky all the lines are once it's been sewn and installed on the frame, on the base, on the, on the doohickey. It's going to get a little squirrely on you, but... We'll get it close enough, and there's enough material here to work with around the edges. I mean, you don't have to get absolutely precise, in my opinion, but you want enough to work with when you go to glue it, staple it, and whatever. So we'll just copy what they did, and then I'm going to mark here. Make sure that's not folded under. And we can clean these lines up with the scissors when we go to cut it out. Now these are my two lines where the seam was, but I need to add a good half an inch because it's a it's a French seam, which means we gotta fold it under and re-sew it, re-top stitch it. So we're gonna need to add enough material on both pieces to be able to do that. So we'll add a half inch there. And that ought to get us. I'm ready. I've got my two pieces laid out here. I'm ready to start sewing them. I'm going to start with the the seam where they're just overlapping. I've got a half inch overlap here and that's going to come into play for our French seam later. And I also have to think about when I sew this right angle, I also need a French seam along there. So I added half an inch 
so this is so back here um, is where it matches this but I need to add half an inch like that um, because I need our French seam along there I need something to to sew to so just line the stripes up I'm gonna pin this and then we'll sew it Now here's the seam I just did along the corner. Um, then I've repinned where it'll wrap around the front of the armrest. I'm just going to start about half inch back, about at the seam here. Somewhere in there. I don't want to go. I don't want to go farther over here, I don't want to start at the edge because then I can't fold that back. Which I may have just gone too far there. Okay, turned out all right. Looks like our stripes are pretty well in line. Corner looks good. Let's move on. Probably shouldn't have pressed record with sunflower seeds in my mouth. Oh well. Okay, I'm going to iron this flat so it's a whole lot easier to work with. Um, got my iron warming up here. And I'm not going to bother filling it with water, you know, then you got to let it dry out or whatever. I don't know. It's just easier for me to use a spray bottle with water. Just get it. You know, when it comes to ironing, I really don't know what I'm doing. But uh, we'll pretend. It's like I still kind of messed up on the corner. Now on the original, the seams are incredibly close to the first seam, the center seam. I don't know if I'm going to try to get it that close. 
I'm just going to use the edge of my foot here for a guide and run it along our middle seam. So first thing this morning, I completely neglected the fact that I needed to sew on this little decorative element here before I went ahead and sewed up my corner. So now I'm going to have to do this with a curve in our material. I think we can get it, um, but if not, worst case scenario, I make another one. So. I've got it all pinned down on the back side, got some Dacron under it to give it some volume there like the original. And I'm just going to do my best to follow a straight line, try to keep all this in line. Probably would be a great idea to base this in place before I try doing anything. Maybe even use um, spray adhesive. I don't know, but I'm going to try it first and we'll see what happens. Not the end of the world, so. Now these armrests are really in pretty decent shape overall. Um, you know, there's plenty of there. Um, you know, there's plenty of material there to work with yet, and a guy could probably just get away with throwing the cover back on. But I'm going to add a little bit of padding to replace what's been flattened over the years, let's say. So I'm just going to spray this down with glue. I'm actually going to take this old sew through or foam or I guess it's cotton batting just peel that off there's another layer of almost horsehair like material underneath that like I don't know it's very coarse stuff a little bit came off of this but that's okay now I'm going to spray this down with uh, adhesive I'm going to stick on another layer of Dacron over the lower part I'm going to get new foam on the top and that'll just add some add some cushion back to the armrest for us and then we'll throw our cover on
Now if you're wondering why I used a spray can for this and not professional automotive contact cement in a spray gun like I did earlier, um, this is like $5 at Walmart, this is $25 or $30 for a quart, and this is not a situation where it really matters that it even sticks. As long as it sticks together until I get the cover over it, that's all I need. If this was in a situation where the glue was doing the work, it was holding a headliner up, it was holding a cover on that would be have potential to fall, um, then I would use the really good stuff. But this is going to be just adequate for what we're doing here. Womp womp.
Well, guys, I think that'll do it for this one. What do you think? Tell me what you think, if it's coming along well enough. Uh, I mean, I think it's okay. I, who am I, you know? Anyway, that'll do it. Um, I think next I'm going to tear into the rear seats, see if we can tie all this back together back here. I'll keep plugging away on little things. I'll do the front garnish molding, the sun visors with you, this extra trim around the top of the doors with you. You know, I'll bring you along for all this stuff as much as I can. Um, tell me what you think. I hope you like it. I mean, it's coming together as well as I expected. I, I don't know. It may not be perfect, you know, but neither am I. So, um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for uh, sharing this time with me. That light is so bright. There you are. Um, God bless you guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Now if I can get out of here. Yeah. <laughs>